Well, this is a particular question that a lot of people have been asking me lately, and I covered this topic in passing quite a while ago, so I figured today is a perfect opportunity to talk about it in a little bit more detail, so let's get after it. Coilovers or springs? That is the main question, right? And that question always is followed up with why? Why one or the other? So if you're currently in the market for coilovers, watch this video in its entirety before you make your purchase. And hopefully some of your questions will be answered and hopefully it'll give you a little bit of guidance in terms of what direction you want to go. Obviously this video is going to be dedicated to buying coilovers and some things you need to think about but i wanted to show you just a couple of clips here of my personal vehicle 2015 infinity q50 3.7 liter v6 it is lowered currently on tain Aztec lowering springs yeah lowering springs under 300 dollars for the set and it lowered the car about 1.5 inches front and back and in my opinion gave it a perfect perfect stance look at that thing now, I never hesitate to direct anyone toward lowering springs because the reality is there are a lot of really good options out there on the market right now. Tane, for example, has been around for many, many years in the OE replacement world, now getting their hands dirty in some of the performance aftermarket stuff. Uh, so this is a good option for a lot of folks. Now, I hear a lot of people tell me, oh, my buddy said don't get lowering springs because it's going to blow your shocks in two weeks and the car is going to be super bouncy and blah, blah, blah. Well, that might be true in some cases. There's always off the wall case and bounciness is gonna depend on the condition of your shocks currently and also the quality spring that you decide to go with. Uh, for example, my Tane springs, I've been on these springs for almost a full year and there is no bounce in the car whatsoever. It rides really nice, really, really close to stock, uh, but I can definitely feel how nimble the cars become after installing them and I'm super pleased. Now, for anybody shopping coilovers, my question always is, what do you plan to do with the car? What do you plan to get out of them? Why are you shopping coilovers in the first place? Because ultimately, the fact is that most people aren't going to push their vehicles hard enough to ever need coilovers. I mean, seriously, coilovers are going to be, at least for a quality set, are going to be in that $1,000 plus range, some well over $1,500 to $2,000. So, you really have to think about what you want to spend your money on and are you going to get the maximum benefit from that expense let's take a look and see what types of options are available for the q50 obviously there are coilover setups that are available for all different types of cars but make sure it makes sense for you to go this route so you can see a bunch pop up right away from tane to bc racing to kw um Megan Racing has coilovers available. There's a ton to choose from, all different price ranges. See, you see Godspeed here from $630. I don't know much about that company, so I couldn't tell you. Uh, Tane is a brand that I'm comfortable with. So here you go. For under $800, bucks, you can get a set of coilovers for the rear wheel drive Q50. Um, and BC Racing, obviously, is a big name in the coilover market. Ooh, 2.0, though. Never mind. Um, Z1 Motorsports has these BC Racing coilovers available on their website for just under $1,000, just to give you an idea. It gives you a little bit of information and we want to do some more detailed reading, but there you go. There's, there's options out there for you. Now, because coilovers are not cheap, I would throw the price or the cost of them into the negative category. And while we're talking about the negatives, uh, let's talk about some of those other things that you might want to think about or take into consideration before you make the dive. Now, whereas anyone can have springs installed in their car and just kind of set it and forget it, they're pretty, they're pretty simple. They're maintenance free. You don't have to, once they're in, you don't have to think about it. Coilovers are a little bit different. And I would suggest, or I would argue that just any old Joe Schmo on the road that maybe likes the look of their car being lowered, coilovers might not be for you. I say that because there's a lot to be taken into consideration, honestly. I mean, there a lot. some of the really good ones have many, many different adjustments that can be made, and you really can mess up the ride of your vehicle 
uh, if you don't know what the hell you're doing or you're not working with a shop that knows what they're doing. And I've heard horror stories of people taking their vehicles to shops, to professionals, having coilovers installed and the car rides like crap because the shop doesn't actually know how to make the adjustments. Now, the car riding like crap is a negative in and of itself, right? You're going to lose, for the most part, ride quality going with coilovers. Um, the shocks are a bit more firm. Uh, the springs themselves, because they're shorter, I suppose, and allow you to lower the vehicle quite low. And, you know, in order to prevent you from bottoming out, they need to be relatively stiff. Now, adjustments can be made, and you can have um, kind of customized setups made for you from um, certain vendors. Uh, but these are all things you want to be knowledgeable about before you make the order. You kind of want an idea of what you're looking for. Uh, again, a lot of these places like BC Racing and, and so on and so forth are going to provide you the support you need uh, and give you some uh, guidance uh, if you don't know what you're doing. But it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to have an idea of what you're getting yourself into before you make a big purchase like this. Now, let's not forget. Ooh, nice seat. Uh, let's not forget that coilovers allow you to drop the car substantially and that is going to change the overall geometry of your suspension system which could require you and most likely will if you drop to a certain level uh, is going to require you to get uh, you know adjustable camber arms caster camber plates you have to think about the alignment of your vehicle if you go with lowering springs for example and you drop it at an inch an inch and a quarter you're probably not going to need an alignment uh, it's always a good idea to get an alignment I will say, um, but you might not fall out of spec. My personal experience with these Tane s -Techs dropped 1.4 inches or so, put it on an alignment rack, everything was still within spec, no adjustments necessary. Now, if you were to go any lower, um, if you really wanna get an aggressive stance with coilovers, you may need some additional components. So don't just look at the price of the coilovers and the price and the time required for installation. Think about some of these additional components that you're gonna need as well. say also if you're just looking for a little bit of added performance over the factory setup and you know want a little lower center of gravity but you rarely you know push the vehicle to its limits you don't do any road racing uh, you rarely drive spiritedly I suppose um, maybe take the car to the mountains every once in a while I would say honestly that coilovers aren't for you either you can really get that drop you're looking for and that increased performance over factory uh, with a good set of lowering springs to be quite honest springs are just fine so my point with that is, are you willing to spend a thousand, thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred dollars on a set of coilovers if you're really not going to utilize uh, their capabilities? If if you're just cruising around town and you you want the car to be lowered a little bit, you know, for for some uh, uh, you know a little better look and a little better handling, it really isn't worth it in my opinion. So why the hell would you get coilovers? What's the point of them if you don't need them for daily driving and they're, they're expensive and they can potentially ruin the ride quality of your vehicle? What's the point? I would say if you're a canyon carver, you make regular trips to the mountains and you don't just go on a leisurely drive through the hills. You really like to beat on the car and push its capabilities and coilovers are a great option. They're going to really improve the overall balance and handling capabilities of your vehicle. Um, for you know like i said a thousand dollars is expensive if you're not going to get any use out of them but if you're spending a thousand dollars to dramatically change the uh, handling capabilities of your vehicle it's a small price to pay and that becomes even more true if you drive on road courses you head to road atlanta or you're an autocrosser coilovers are almost a must at that point because listen we talked about blowing your shocks with lowering springs now in a regular daily driving type scenario you're probably not going to blow your shocks at least not right away uh, but if you're autocrossing your vehicle on lowering springs there's a good chance you're going to beat those shocks up real fast the other huge positive for coilovers is the adjustability like i mentioned earlier lowering springs obviously are kind of a set and forget right you install it and then there's nothing else to worry about because there's nothing you can do about it coilovers on the other hand have a wide range of adjustability depending on which ones you go with obviously uh, but 
that is super beneficial if you are, again, a road racer, an autocrosser, or somebody that really likes to dial in uh, their setup. For example, if you're heading to an event and you know that it's really, really heavy in the left cornering, you know that you can make those adjustments so your car is perfectly balanced or best suited to that particular track. And that's really valuable, if you're, especially if you're in a competitive type situation. Now adjustability is a good thing too for daily driving situations. If you want to make it softer ride or more of a stiff ride, you can adjust that as well. Now I don't want to say that only autocrossers or canyon carvers benefit from the adjustability of coilovers or just coilovers in general because it's not entirely true. Sometimes the adjustability factor has enough value in it uh, for people that just want it. Now I say that because there's people that don't ever push their cars, but they go ahead and make the purchase for coilovers anyway because they like that adjustability. They may be going to a particular car show and they want the car to sit just right for that show. Uh, or maybe they just like to mess around and play with the look of their vehicle. And obviously we all know that stance has a major impact on the car, how the car looks in general. You can really change the overall look of a vehicle just by raising or lowering it a couple of inches or just an inch uh, from time to time. Well, I've made a video about this before, and but when people ask me what my favorite mods are or what a couple of my favorite mods are, I always say my lowering springs and sway bars. And it's not lowering springs just because they're lowering springs, it's just suspension in general because of the impact that it has on the overall performance of the vehicle. Combined with a good set of sway bars, it's a whole different beast. I don't care if you only have 300 horsepower to the wheels, if your car handles like a dream, it makes it fun to drive. So really, either way that you decide to go is fine with me. Coilovers or springs, springs are a good option. Coilovers are uh, substantially more expensive and I suggest you kind of do a little bit of research and figure out what you're getting yourself into before you, you make that type of purchase. I hope I gave you just a couple of things to think about before you make the plunge and spend a thousand plus dollars on coilovers. Um, but like I said, you're not going to be unhappy because either way, springs or coilovers, uh, it's going to really change how your car feels on the road and that's massive. Yes, yes, you can save substantial amounts of money going with lowering springs, but again, you have to think about the longevity of your shocks and you really want to think about the brand and quality of spring that you choose to go with as well as the ride height because remember once you install the lowering springs you might get a little bit of relaxation uh, from the weight of the vehicle after a, a short period of time but after that you're set your car is set right there there's absolutely no adjustability obviously and you're kind of uh, stuck with what you got lowering springs offer you that wide range of adjustability but uh, because of how they're set up and the purpose that they serve, you may lose a little ride quality. So again, do your research, check with the uh, vendor or the brand that you're purchasing to make sure you know the settings that you should probably go with. Now you just really want to think about what you what you expect to get out of your vehicle or what you want to get from these coilovers. You don't want to be that type of person that has them installed for a year or two years and you realize that you never actually touched the settings and you don't actually push the car that hard. That would just be a waste of $1,500 in my opinion. But maybe you're going to be that person that didn't really think that you would touch uh, the coilovers uh, adjustments, but you're constantly finding yourself playing with different settings, uh, driving the car in different types of scenarios and really feeling out the vehicle, kind of making it your own and, and, and uh, setting it up, dialing it, dialing it into your specific driving characteristics. And it could be a lot of fun for you. So uh, just, just put a little thought into it. But if you have any questions or concerns or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any input or insight into your experiences with coil coilovers, uh, let me know in the comment section below as well. It might help everybody else that's watching this video or, or doing some research on their own. But uh, those are a few things that I would think about uh, before I make the purchase. And uh, hopefully it was helpful to bring some topics uh, to your mind as well. So thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.